What's up guys, this is The Honest Outlaw here, and today we're going to be doing an exciting review. We're going to be talking about one of the cooler pistols on the market, the H&K P30L. Now this is John Wick's sidearm from the original John Wick, making it that much cooler, right? So what is it? It is a 9mm or 40 caliber pistol with a 4.5 inch barrel. The P30L, the version that I have, is a long slide version of the standard P30, which has a 4 inch barrel. It weighs 27 ounces, putting it around the M&P, CZP07, P10C range, making it a great size and weight for a do-it-all pistol like sealed carry, home defense, IDPA, shooting bad guys John Woo style in an action movie, whatever you want. Open up the box real quick and we'll look at it. And as you can see here, Thank you H&K for three magazines. This gun comes with three magazines. I can't stress enough how cool that is. It seems like a fad these days that gun companies are making them with less and less magazines. More magazines are always better, especially when HK magazines can be a little pricey. I didn't price these because it came with three already, but they can be. Now it also came with this match weight, which I'll talk about here in a second. And obviously the pistol. This is the HK P30L. Look at that thing. Now the P30L is a double action gun, kind of. And I say kind of because I have the V1 version, which is a little bit strange. Now if you pick this gun up at a gun store or a gun show and try the trigger out, you're gonna be shocked at how kind of terrible it is. You're gonna be like, wow, why would anybody want this? It's like a 50 pound trigger. The problem is, is that's not really how it works and you're just doing it wrong. Uh, you're gonna have to put a round into the chamber and as you can see, there is no decocker on this firearm. So that kind of puts it into a different mode. I think this is called the LEM trigger. Now don't quote me on that, I'm not an HK fanboy, but I do really like this gun, and I'm more about performance and how it works than all the little intricacies of the gun, but I think it's called the LEM trigger. Now that makes the gun have a much better trigger, for lack of a, an eloquent way to say that. It get, brings it to a four point found, very crisp trigger pull. So you can see here, much lighter, and that is just a really good double action only trigger. Maybe the best that I've ever tried, honestly. And I think it's because of that LEM trigger that they have in the version one. Now the version three, the gun that I have not tried, does come with a standard decocker. As you can see, my version does not have a decocker because it is not needed. So essentially every time you pull the trigger, you're gonna get that crisp trigger no matter what you do. Now one downside to the LEM trigger is that it, the reset is not the greatest. Let me show you that real quick here. You can see it's just a little bit long, and we'll talk about that towards the end of the video. It has a 15 round magazine capacity, again, putting it on par with the rest of the polymer pack of handguns. It comes with ambi controls, as you can see here. I have the version with the safety. Uh, if it were me and I could do it all over again, I would get the one without the safety. However, I did get this gun used for $400, which is pretty much the steal of the century, so I will just live with the safety and basically ignore it. The reason why I don't like the safety, even though it is ambi, if you do like a safety, it's nice to have that in case you're shooting lefty. But the reason why I don't like it is it seems like a little bit of an afterthought, honestly. It seems like they kind of just slapped it on there without really really thinking. It doesn't feel like a 1911 safety or a CZ safety where it feels like it's meant to be on the gun and you can kind of use it to increase the ergonomics. It, to me, it actually seems like it gets in the way of the already excellent ergonomics. Now, I really do like the extended slide release that is ambidextrous, again, and I also appreciate the uh, AMB magazine release for you left-handers out there. However, one of the reasons why I don't like it traditionally is because I, I'm used to an American-style magazine release, although there's nothing wrong with this, except for when I do pull the trigger, sometimes you see my fingernail or my finger gets caught right there on that magazine release. That's never stopped me from shooting quickly, but it does make me think once or twice, and I don't love that about it. However, if this was my only handgun, I could probably train around that, and it probably wouldn't bother me at all, so I don't really consider that a knock on the firearm itself. Now, as far as reliability goes, it is excellent. 
It has a proven track record among special forces, law enforcement, you name it. H&K has pretty much the best track record in the business, or at least one of them for that matter, and the P-30 is no exception. In my personal testing, I fired well over 700, almost to 1,000 rounds because I really enjoy this pistol, and it had zero issues whatsoever, and that included Wolf as well. And even adding the match weight, as you can see right here, did not change reliability at all, even with subsonic ammunition. Had no problems whatsoever. Now, this isn't a compensator like I believe he was running in the John Wick movie. However, it does make it look like the John Wick gun, and it does add quite a bit of weight out front, lowering that muzzle flip and making you shoot just a little bit faster. Kind of makes it look like RoboCop's backup gun, and man, is it cool. I know that cool factor isn't everything, but if you can have coolness and functionality, why not? Let's get into accuracy real quick. Another reason why the LEM trigger is so awesome. Uh, it really aids in accuracy. And that 4.5 pound, again, it really is. Not like Glock where they advertise 5.5 and you actually get 12 or something like that. This really is 4.5 pounds and it is very light and very crisp. Add that to the pretty excellent luminescent sights. Now, they're not night sights which is kind of a not kind of not right because the illuminescence do work really well i think they work up to about an hour or something like that so if you're in the daylight and you have to go into a dark room it will illuminate your sights even brighter than night sights or in some cases fiber optic so that's really nice however if you're waking up in the middle of the night and you have to use this you probably won't be able to use these to find your gun on the bedside which is one of the reasons why i really like night sights but if you're using a weapon light at night, you're going to have no issues using the gun. So I think the sights are fairly well done, certainly better than factory Glock sights. Ergonomics and shootability. How well does it shoot, basically? Uh, the bore axis first is a little bit high, but I would say it's actually lower than most double action pistols that I fired. And weirdly enough, the recoil and pulse on this is very, very smooth. I would say it's smoother than the VP9, although this appears to be a VP9 with a double action trigger, but it does not shoot that way. It actually shoots a lot smoother and it's got a really low recoil and pulse. I would say maybe even a little bit lower than a Glock, maybe on par with an M&P. And add the match weight and you're going to be even lower than that. Now let's talk about the grip here because that's one of the really shining achievements of the HK pistols in my opinion. VP9 included, they probably have the best grip in the gun world uh, for a couple of reasons. One, it's very ergonomic. Now I know I have it covered up by these horribly bad looking sandpaper grips from Talon Grips, but I really like the functionality and I really like the extra texture. I'm one of those guys that need to have stippling or sandpaper grips on everything. So I know it's ugly, but I like it because it lets me shoot faster and I like to go fast like Ricky Bobby. Not only does it have the back straps like a Glock, for example, but it also has panels right here, side panels, which I'll show you real quick. I gotta get them out of the box. Now it comes with three different back straps and three different sets of side panels to make the grip either as large or as small as you want, making it just that much more comfortable. And they really did a bunch of research on this grip. Similar to the PPQ, but I think just a little bit better, it is extremely comfortable. This is how you do finger grooves. If you're going to do them, I don't traditionally like them, but this is how you do them. Very, very subtle, and it just kind of molds your hand in there. It fits right in. It feels like it's molding right into butter. And the undercut is one of the best in the business as well. You see how wide that is? That really eliminates all that Glock knuckle you're going to have when you're choking up on the pistol. So the undercut's excellent and the grip's excellent. The magazine well is good. I wish it was a little bit more beveled forget the super fast speed reloads but definitely not bad at all the slide serrations are also pretty excellent as you see i keep doing those tactical uh, uh press checks there because it's really easy to do the they aren't too aggressive and they are just aggressive enough to be really tactile you can hold on them any way you want and you can operate the slide really easy especially because it does have a little bit bigger bore axis the the upside to a larger bore axis is usually have a lot more slide to mess around with if you have a uh, malfunction it's easier to grab a hold of and manipulate so that's kind of nice. Although, as I said, you probably won't have very many with this pistol. The magazine release did work well if you're into that kind of thing. I know you guys over the pond are probably screaming at me for not liking this, but if you're used to as many guns as I am with American magazine releases, it's hard to get used to it. But it's not that hard to roll it over just a little bit. It's just a little bit further of a reach for me. Now, I know a lot of you guys are going to be saying that you can use your index finger and that kind of thing. I have really long fingers, so it's kind of hard for me to do that with my index finger. I can do it with my middle finger, but it just seems cumbersome and a battery of arms that I don't really want to learn. So for this particular pistol, I'll just roll it over and hit it. It's not that big of a deal. 
Now the shootability was awesome, except for one thing. Now I mentioned earlier in the video that we'd get back to that trigger reset. Now the trigger's great for accuracy, that 4.5 pound trigger, really awesome. Downside is the longer reset you have, the longer it takes you to get those shots off because the longer amount of distance you have to travel. So if I pull this trigger, I have to reach all the way out every single time to continually work that trigger. And if you're used to a certain amount of travel and you're used to riding that trigger to reset every single time, it can mess with you just a little bit when you're trying to shoot really, really quickly. And it can slow you down just a hair. Now maybe in a match or something, that would be a big deal. But as far as like self-defense or something, I really don't think you're going to notice, especially if you train with it a lot. Now other than the safety and maybe the magazine release and the action possibly taking some getting used to, this is an excellent pistol. I see no reason why you wouldn't pick this for home defense, concealed carry, or whatever you'd want to do with a polymer frame pistol. This would hang with a Glock M&P. Even though it has some intricacies, it has a cool factor and a uniqueness to it as well that I think separates it from the pack quite a bit. And especially at that $400 to $500 price range, I think you're getting a really excellent battle-proven gun that you can do pretty much anything you want with. So did John Wick make the right decision? I really think he did. I really do. Now, a lot of polymer guns can be personal preference for sure, but for me, I think this pistol is a solid I would have to give it a 10 out of 10. I enjoyed shooting this way more than I thought I would. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. Please help out your local homeless shelters and remember to recycle. I'll check you later. It's not what you did, son. It's who you did it to. Nobody? But nobody. It's John Wick.